early fights. Some of the fights, yeah. But I, I did nothing. Nothing. I didn't frame them. I didn't put them up. I didn't pick the color. I didn't pick what would go up. I didn't pick shit. Well, well whoever did, did a good job. Well, yeah, yeah, she's awesome. She's the one that yeah. did all this. She's very creative, man. It's amazing. Well, every picture you see up was Joanna. I had zero input and zero help. You see this floors? Her. She gets a lot of credit, visually. Well, there's a lot of photos over there. You think you could uh, yep. talk to us about it? Yeah. We, we noticed that uh, from the early days with Pops, yeah. like training and then your teammates, yeah. that's kind of what it looked like. Looks like these look like in a similar time. Uh, yeah. Um, All the way from you training well, to you coaching. Well, well this, this one right here was, was a lot of... Uh, Pops' guys, is this was uh, Chris Brinkenhoff, who was uh, the uh, welterweight kickboxing world champion. Francis Farley, that's uh, the middleweight. Uh, I forgot his name. And this is Alex Kambabian, who, who is actually a world champion too. And then there was Skinny Me. <laughs> um, then here I am with Pops. We were in Santa Cruz over here at some outdoor gym. We were there. Uh, this was. My toughest fight ever, even though it was an amateur fight. This guy here was a heavyweight, and I didn't know it was a heavyweight bout. They told me I was going to come and fight, you know, for the AAU title, whatever. And so as I'm walking into place, I didn't know who I was going to fight, and people knew who I was fighting, and they're asking me, they go, hey, you know who you're fighting? I go, no. You know, it's like, oh, don't worry, you got him, but, they, you know. <laughs> and uh, I saw this guy, and I'm looking at him, and I go, yeah, that's a big boy. And I'm like, I was just telling myself, God damn it, I'm glad I'm not fighting him. And then uh, we're walking, he yells out, he goes, hey, Thunder. And I look at him, he goes, uh, goes my name is Thunderwolf, I'm your opponent. I'm like, oh, I'm kicking your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I went from, I don't want to fight this guy, to I'm kicking your ass because it's too late. I couldn't back out. Right, you right. Know? Was there, like, do you remember there was, did you guys weigh in that morning? Did you face off any I, before? Well, what the weigh-ins, okay, this was the tricky type of stuff. This was yeah. in 1987, I think. And I weighed in with cowboy boots, jeans, belt, and a leather jacket. And I had quarters, a roll, bunch of rolls of quarters in my pocket. To be able to make the weight because I wouldn't have made the weight. So wow. I, I had about 10 pounds plus of stuff on me. <laughs> <laughs> and they let you weigh in like that. It was, yeah, it was, yeah. it wasn't, that's what he weighs. It wasn't, it wasn't like the State Athletic Commission out, so I barely made the weight by like one pound. And uh, yeah, he, he, he gave me a concussion, that guy. Wow. Did so, you face off with him before you even got in the ring with him? Or did you see him? Uh, you saw I, I don't remember a lot of it. I just remember he was a tough son of a bitch. And he, he freaking hit hard. How many rounds? It went five. It was a title fight. You know, or, you know, maybe it was four. I don't remember. It was an amateur title. But uh, yeah, he and it's one of the toughest. Wow. Yeah, he was wow. not to know. Not one of the toughest. He was the toughest. Wow. You know, that was the toughest. You know, now by far. So again, this was and this was our first T-shirt ever. You know, um, so young pops could see. <laughs> Here. That's actually a nice fact. I'm obviously a t-shirt printer, so I'm always looking at shirts and, and that's and I remember I saw an interview with you a while ago and um, when you did do the American Kickboxing Academy, you were actually against the American part. Yes. <laughs> yes, uh, because uh, you know, I was a martial artist and, and to me everything in martial arts you wanted a Korean name or some oriental name. Sure. So my friend says uh, Kim Rhodes worked for Bottomley Distribution. He goes, why don't you just call American Kickboxing Academy? I go, dude, I'm Mexican, I can call it. He goes, well, you, where were you born? I go, I was born in Mexico. Well, Mexico is North America, right? I said, yeah. He goes, well, still American. Yeah, yeah. I said, okay. Hey, Kim Rhodes, yeah, he's the one who gets that. I don't, yeah, it's him right here. That's the no guy. way. Yes, yeah, Kim Rhodes. Oh, he gets credit. Yeah, he gets a lot of credit. He's the one that did it. Because and, now it's AKA, and, yeah, obviously. Yeah, everyone it was, knows it's it. because of this guy. And uh, <laughs> Ernie Reyes Sr. is right there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's so something. funny. A lot of these guys. I mean, I forgot some of these guys' names. I forgot. Yeah, that looks like a great picture yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, Enrique, you want out, huh? Huh? I was going to go around. No, you can't go around. Uh, I can't. Here, Jeff, can you go from, and turn off the music while we're at it? Might as well. Yeah. First, uh, this was the very first gym that I, that I used. When I used to go train with Pops, I would go, whatever he taught me, I'd come back and I'd teach these guys. 
What, was that the glass That's place? That's the glass shop. No way. Right That's the one. Glass shop. Yeah, that's where it all started. And, and that was a buddy of yours, right? And he kind of yeah, got... Jim Armetta. Jim Armetta was my buddy, and uh, and the reason why I got into fighting was this guy right here, Juan Alexander. He's the reason why I got involved in fighting. How did that happen? Well, I used to train. He was a martial artist. He boxed. He did track. He did everything. And I and I was in you know martial arts, and that's how we met. And I used to always talk about I would have, I could have, I should have. And he got tired of me talking. <laughs> So we were running one time, and he just stopped in the middle of the running, and he goes, you know what? He goes, I'm sick and effing tired of you talking shit. He goes, what have you ever accomplished? And I go, well, I could have, and then he just shut the F up. You haven't done anything, so if you haven't done anything, I'm tired of you talking. Don't tell me no more. Show me. So until you've done something, shut the F up. So what ended up happening from that point, two weeks later, I'm sitting with Scott Coker at a Denny's um, restaurant, and... and uh, he was talking about uh, people trying to get a people to do a uh, you know exhibition with Superfoot Wallace, and you know I just was joking. I go, I'll sure. do it, I'll do it, and, and he goes, you're on, and I'm like, oh shit, he thinks I'm serious. I'm not serious, you know. So so I, I was like, ah, and then I remember his talk. Rung in your head. Shut the hell up, do it, you know. Don't talk, just do it, and. That's how I got involved in the, in the fighting, was with that guy right there. And that was it. That was it. You Did know? you know Pops already at that time, or that's when you ended up no. kind of training and ran I, into him? I didn't run into Pops. I got introduced through him uh, to him through Sam Montgomery, who was his student. Well, Sam was another world champion that was with Pops. Sam took me to Pops. Uh, that's how I, I went to Sam. I didn't go to Pops. And uh, I, didn't hear, I didn't know anything about boxers or nothing. So, mm -hmm. you know, he introduced me to Pops. You know, it was Sam Montgomery. Yeah. So, yeah, and this was uh, my first gym. It was Scott Coker's gym. This was a West Coast Taekwondo gym. That was where I used to train. What so was Scott doing back then? He was an instructor. This was his gym. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Except there was no bags up here. I, when I took it over, his bag. You see that Korean flag? That's from Taekwondo, and that was yeah. his flag. I didn't have those. <laughs> that was his. You know? So he had that, and then little, and then he would just start to kind of put shows together on the uh, on the small end back then. Yeah, yeah, they used to be because uh, he had students, obviously. So well, he he got into the promotion, and they were called uh, I, I forgot what they were, but yeah, he did shows back then with greats like Brad Bad Brad Bad Brad Hefton, uh, Tra uh, Troy Dorsey, all those PKA guys that, that Scott would throw shows, and I used to help him. I went from you know, helping him pick up fighters to work in the back room, to being one of his fighters, to being one of his champions. You know, a lot of it, uh, being the success I had, was a contribution of Scott Coker uh, being, you know, fortunate to be involved with Pops. You know, to learn the, the you know, some of the things that he instilled in, in, in me and others, you know. And, um, yeah, that, that's what enabled me to do what I did. There's a lot of yeah. moving pieces, a lot of people There's a involved. lot of people, it's not just one in particular, but there right. are some major ones. And, Pops was definitely a major factor. Uh, still to this day, you know, I've been able to uh, I've been able to produce many champions as a result of of uh, a lot of what I've learned from him. Like how he coached and the, obviously the techniques that he did. Yeah, the, it's it's more it's how they, he he learned how to throw the power. You know, everybody adds their own elements. We all add our own elements, but but my core is what he taught me. Mm -hmm. The core is what he taught me. And I charge this because much? I didn't want to have a job that required me to do. I worked for Budweiser part time. I could have worked full time, and I wouldn't have had any of these guys. But if I worked full time for Budweiser, then that wouldn't have allowed me to, to train properly. And my goal was to be the best I could be. And it wasn't. I didn't try to be a world champion. I just wanted to be the best I could be. You know. And I was a real estate agent before this happened. So I was already in, in the field of something that you can make a lot of money, sure. but I chose love for uh, physical activity. And it didn't have to be boxing, kickboxing. It just needed to be something, because my friend said, shut the F up, you keep talking. So, yeah. so, that, so that's what I did. So no, I, I didn't plan on doing the gym, no. That was all pure accident. This was just to make money while I was you know, trying to be the best I could be at, at, a, at a kickboxing. That was it. I had nothing to do with like, opening the gym. I had. No clue, no desire to do it. It just Zero. led that way it as things got it better. It led that way, yeah, but I had no desire to do it. it wow. I'll, I'll talk about the time when you were, uh, you know, training under Scott Coker and Scott Coker brought you to Pops. 
We already did that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. We covered that. that. that we was, mentioned yeah, that. He brought me to Sam Montgomery. Oh, okay. Sam Montgomery brought me to Pops. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just amazing how it's like, you know, all of these different steps is what leads to yeah. this amazing place. Yeah. yeah. Like every time I come, I find a new area or a new different picture. Well, there's so many pictures that aren't even up. It's ridiculous. I mean, and, and the, we ran out of walls, to be honest with you. The, 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 she's got all the whole back over there, but those are already taken up when she gets to it. But she's the one, the boss, so she decides what to <laughs> You know, she does a great job. Sounds so, good. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's so much exciting things going on now and so much in store in the future. I mean, even uh, uh, fun fact about me, I used to uh, work with um, Spartan screen printing. Oh, Mike Swick. Mike Swick. Yeah, so he was just here. Before I had my printing stuff, uh, I knew of him. And I was like, what? Uh, Mike Swick has a screen print shop. So before I got my equipment, I would use him to print my stuff. And um, and from there is, is just kind of how I was like, you know, I, I should follow my passion. And, and I kind of started getting more involved. So now seeing him with AK Thailand, and all the things that are going on over there. They're and, successful. And so we have AK growing all over the world. Is this kind of a As, uh, thing? Yeah, actually, I'm uh, I'm talking to my lawyers on um, this Tuesday in a conference call to get the uh, licensing uh, uh, paperwork in order and doing it correctly. So I don't want any screw ups, sure. or any anything that leads to bad stuff. So you know we're we're gonna draw up the the licensing, uh, you know, of AK. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, program uh, first nationwide. We're not doing it through worldwide. Just nationwide, because it's a little harder when you go worldwide. So, uh, and then I already got someone called me that wants to talk about uh, gyms, like a you know, like a UFC type. So it'd be like a franchise kind of thing, maybe. It's licensing, similar. Yeah, the franchise is a whole different ballgame. Okay. Because we don't even qualify. I don't even want to deal with. It. And it's to do with those things because they're very difficult to monitor. I kind of have it more for the public to kind of, instead of going to the gym, you go here. Well, with the licensing deal, you're, you, it's your gym. You run it the way you run it. You mm -hmm. know, there's just certain things that that are as a requirement as a licensee, you know, and a licensor, you know. I don't really know what they really are because I'm not no expert on any of that. Yeah, Just yeah. know that we're going in that arena. Well, let me, let me I guess uh, the biggest thing for today is, is uh, it's Pop's one year anniversary of his passing. And obviously, he's influenced a lot of people. And it, it keeps it, what keeps ringing in my head is what is how would you even put into words what he means to everything that's around us? Like, if it was for what he did with you, I think without him, it wouldn't exist. Well, yeah, you can definitely say that just like with Oscar Coker, none of this would exist because it all leads somewhere, right? right, right. You know, um. There are a lot of people played a, an important role in this, you know, but he, he because because I'm still using his system or what he what I learned from him, yeah. yeah it has to be. I mean not, yeah. he's I mean out of all the coaches I've had, I'm using his stuff compared to everybody else. I'm using his stuff seventy percent of what he taught me versus thirty percent of the other guys and stuff I learned on my own. Yeah. So if I'm using seventy percent of his stuff, obviously this is a video agent too what I learned from him. And then that 100%. leads to yeah. successful fighters and championships yeah. Yeah. and yeah. Yeah. attention it's, and it's, the whole it's, nine it's, yards. It's, you know, it's a lot of what I learned from him that that whether he said, boy, I'm going to teach you this, which he did it, but it didn't matter. You know, you learned it anyway. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, you know, he didn't say, hey, I want to teach you this, I'm going to teach you that. He just, you learn it. You know, the only thing I wish he would have taught me is how to hold pads. <laughs> Shit, you know. I saw some videos that uh, uh, even at his, his older age, he would still be able to hit mitts for heavyweights. Well, yeah, but check this out, okay? It wasn't until a year, about a year, a little over a year ago, I asked him, what's your secret, Pops? How the hell are you, How do you doing? Keep doing it? So he showed me. And I've been trying for over a year to perfect it. I haven't perfected it. It is so hard to catch the way he does. It is so freaking hard. People just don't understand what I'm trying to say here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but as a result of what I learned from him, I used to catch one to two guys a day. Huh. That was it. Well, since I got better his style, I was recently, before I got injured again, I, I was doing five to eight. I've never done that. Bad elbow, is that what it is? Well, I was, I was doing his style and trying to get it right, and I screwed up, and one of my Russian guys, Islam, he hit and it popped in here. Uh, 
And I'm like, son of a bitch, you know, and I thought I was like, and it was easy. It was easy. It was easy doing it his style. There's no way in hell, I, if I trained five guys in my past, man, I'd be like, fuck, oh, I'm done. Yeah. Because right. you're talking all those monsters sitting with all that full power. And, yeah, pop style is the best style to, to longevity, you know, and unfortunately I don't have it. Yet. And for the for the layman who, you know, obviously most people would probably look, oh, you just have to hold them up and tell them combinations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what, what would you say is like, obviously you know how to do it, and he did it very well. Like, what, what would you say is the difference? I don't know how to do it. It's hard it. to even put it in words, yeah, I, the yeah, difference? It's, it's hard to put it into words, I don't, and I'm not claiming to have, no, I don't have it. No, I'd be lying if I did. I do not There's have it. There's a gap it. somewhere. There's something I'm special still, that he's doing. Yeah, I still don't have it. I still do not have it. The, he... I wish I had it. Yeah. I would be injured, you know. <laughs> but I, I, I do understand uh, a, a lot of it, but I don't have it like he did. No way. Wow. That's something. Because no I've seen the videos. Uh, I, I remember seeing one with Kane, and obviously... Well, he had the, know, the, I had him train the, the current glory heavyweight champion, Rico Van Hooven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Big guy. Yeah, he was here in, in the cage room and he was in the ring room and he was, you know, kick, you know, punch harder. And I'm like, <laughs> you're talking the heavyweight uh, kickboxing glory six champion, nine, right, Oz? Yeah, he's, he's like tall. six four. He's, yeah, no he's problem heavyweight. with him. No problem with and him. He's young too, so yeah. you know he's got full, yeah. full energy. Yeah, Pops was able to do it. No problem, easy. Special, just yeah. to say the least. Yeah, no, There's like no I said, one, you know, I mean, even me. Working now and working with the fighters, I don't, I don't hold a mitt like Pop. No way. And uh, even the fighters that had experience working a mitt with Pop and now working with me, still, you know, Pop is is the number one guy that they, you know, appreciate when working with the mitts. I change up things a little bit different because I work on the defense and counter. Uh, but I never wanted to try to hold a mitt exactly like Pop sure. because I know I couldn't. I just, you know. Everybody creates their own style of whole mix with their fighters. I guess that's what would be the most impressive, right? It's just at his age to be able to be taking all those hits. Some, like, how is that even possible, right? Yeah. Like you said, you're here getting hurt. I'm getting hurt. I can't. I can't. And you're I, nowhere near his age. No, no, I can't, I can't do what he can do. I, yeah. you know, he, it just. I mean, I was just getting close. <laughs> no, but. Obviously, I, I know I know if I had it because I, I I watched him for years do this, you know, and you know I don't have it. Uh, I'm better than most, you know. Sure. I probably probably next to him, I'm probably well, he's gone, but I'm probably the next best one at his style, sure. you know. But I don't have it. Don't have something it. special. And people don't understand what I'm saying dude. until until you try it, then you understand. Because I, I have people, oh, you did this now. I see all of them go, oh yeah yeah, but I watch him. I go. You don't fucking have a clue. You yeah. don't have a clue. For me, just seeing it, just seeing it was like that. He's hitting pretty hard, you know, and 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 pops was just doing it like that was pr impressive by itself. Yeah. Let alone you know whatever combinations and everything else he was looking to do. Well, sounds great. I mean, if you guys want to, um, we can finish it and we can set up and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start finish the beginning. It. All right, let's go. Yeah, everybody that looks at this, they always think that this one here. <laughs> I say, so you and Francis fought each other? I said, <coughs> no. I go, <coughs> they, they look, they don't look to my main main event. They don't look at, the, but they think that we fought each other. Yeah, well, five, five poster has gone a long way, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I did see this one. This wasn't your first, though. This, I think, wasn't your first in 85? This is the one with the, the, the Thunderwolf, the guy I told you, the heavyweight. This was this one. Dennis Alexio was, um, he did an exhibition. <clears throat> um, this is the one where my, my, when I lost my title, this was here. Joey Dorsey, the, the Charlie the Chimp. <laughs> <laughs> hey, worldwide on pay per view. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Big time win. Ernie Ray. Well, that's 94. That's uh, that's almost. Uh...